Greetings in the name of the Most High. <clears throat> Greetings in the name of the Most High. Greetings in the name of the Most High. Greetings in the name of the Most High. Uh, and any d derivation thereof? Uh, okay, you know, when people are first learning about the gang stalking and, um, you know, they're... They're getting it because they're either with the Lord or about to be with the Lord, or you know, they, they, they it's coming from a demonic place because that level of organization does not exist really. I mean, it there there are you know police outfits and so on that that can do the, this kind of stalking, or there's there's you know, neighborhood watch stalking. There's all kinds of things like that where people talk and commiserate and they gossip and they stalk. But you have to understand the spirit they're operating under is more of a hive mind, demonic spirit, and it goes something like this. This is the this is the the reason it exists. This is how it exists. Okay, so you're a bad person, though you've done nothing wrong. But but because you've done nothing wrong, you're a bad person. Okay, the number one axiom here: you are a number. You're a very bad person, and because you have done nothing wrong, uh, you, you must be abused, and that's the right thing to do because you're a bad person. And the fact that you haven't done anything wrong is fueling the fire against you. Fueling the fire against you. Wrong meaning, you know, malign the neighbors, uh, stolen, born false witness, you know, been anything but a you, you know you you it's it's typically it's a the good people that get you know to get this treatment. Uh, you've kept to yourself. You haven't really done anything that should alert anyone to any kind of you know stalking issue. Now, but that's not who they're going up against. They're not going up against you. They're going up against what you represent. You know, say the good. Say the light. Say say, the spirit that is animating them knows what you're going to do and knows how, how the effect you will have and knows if you're a threat. So they're going to assign these hives to you. And though you complain you've done nothing wrong, they're going to double down on it. And if you complain or say, you know, ouch, say this to someone yesterday, if, if you say ouch, uh, oh, well, therefore I have to punish you again you see and it gets rolling like that you know and it involves everything from you know false witness you know you're the bad guy you're the bad you're the you're the um justifying sabotage of your vehicle causing uh accidental death um <clears throat> uh, being sensitive you're driving gaslighting in other words to putting, you know, to say you're trying to do something, making sure that there are so many obstacles that you can't do function anymore, driving you to suicide, self-doubt, victimhood, uh, feeling like if those people just leave you alone, you could just do your job, you could you could succeed, but you can't because uh, they're throwing everything in the way to stop you from just being able to live a normal life. Now piling on with invisible weapons, and we don't know who the perps are, and you know you're feeling like an experiment, like a victim, and, and then eventually, the whole point of it is for you to give up and then kill yourself. That's the that's the goal. While on the way down, they steal everything you've got. That's the secondary goal, and um, it's just basically kind of almost like a law of the jungle. I mean, the demonic power that gets in there is a hive mind demon that is the same one occupying giving all the people involved the same exact thought at the same time now they know that demon's there and they obey it because if they don't then they're going to get punished themselves so they have to no one admits it's going on no one admits that level of synchronicity is happening that 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 level of coordination is happening but it, it is happening and it could not happen unless they had forward knowledge in time of what you will and won't do so that you may be predictable so they can get out ahead. That 
can only be done if there is a breach in the time-space continuum, which means we're no longer in the realm of just human here, which proves my point. Uh, there's only one thing you can do. If, if you're a person that, if you want to remain functional and doing whatever the task the Lord has for you to do or your job or uh, some endeavor that you want to do, uh, maybe it's a podcast or create something, if you want to continue to be a viable person and make a contribution to society, then the only way through that wall, it's a wall, it's a solid wall, um, because it's got, it doesn't start here with people because you can travel a hundred a thousand miles away and that same wall will be there waiting for you. So this is, they laugh about this. They think it's funny. These people are, you know, they're witches, covens. Um, I mean, the occultists are all about this. It's all they do all day long is this kind of stuff, doing spells and rituals, throwing spells, rituals, demons, sending demons, etc., on people. High mind stalking. Uh, they they uh, usually people are afraid of the of the local witches. What they'll do to them, so they cooperate, and they do you know their their thing of you know moving your mail, coming in and uh, moving your uh, shirts into another closet, then leaving. You know what I mean? They they control all the. Uh, uh, pretty soon they have total surveillance, and uh, then they just want to fuck with you until finally you know you. You're, 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 you're destroyed within and without. And this is their war against God. And this is their war against him. You're, you're obviously an attacked human. You've never been in part of any kind of witchcrafts, covens, occult. It's just not your thing. And if you are, then you never were really welcome. You're still a guest. Watch out for that word guest. If they... If they, if you get, if you, you know, come into a situation where there's uh, a lot of them and someone says, the guests are here, uh, you better believe the trouble is up. They're, they're conspiring trouble. They're, they're preparing to, to do something. And it's not just the human. You have to realize it's in concert with, there goes the flickering light. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, they, they, uh, yeah, they, they, you know, woe be unto the guests. <laughs> the guests are here, meaning you're not part of their hive. And uh, then, you know, straighten up, the guests are here. In other words, you know, uh, the, the, the warden is here. They pretend you're being happy in your little cage. You know, there's, there, there's great resentment for the guests because, they feel that the guests are keeping them in a cage and if they could only be let out to just be their bad selves. And then you say, well, what would you like to do? Well, kill people I don't agree with and, uh, you know, fornicate all day long. And, you know, nothing nothing spiritual, just power and, uh, and, and uh, you know, euphoria and uh, drugs and predatory madness. You know, feasting on souls so that I could pump my power up and that I can wield godlike power upon the masses and boost myself into total stardom. And, you know, so if you have that kind of thing where you see them in action, and, you know, they're, they're a lot of times they're like the cool people. You know, they look like they're cool, they love animals, they, they, they have their children, they seem to be perfectly normal people until they're not, until you're in a situation where it's them and you. And then they tend to manifest when it's, you know, 15 against one. They will, uh, you know, start in and they'll say, well, it's not my fault. It's because you are, you know, you are sold out. You're a Jesus freak. I mean, you know, I'm not going to cooperate with you. And or, you know, I mean, that's, you know, what 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 uh, what I am, basically. And um you know, you're sold out to God, and so you've, you know, you've, you're not part of our thing. So you know, the least common denominator is, you know, um, you're the one that has to be attacked or abused. And there's really, you know, when that starts happening, and a lot of times it starts subtly. You know, a neighbor, or this and that. You know, someone says something, 
The guy downstairs says the exact same thing. You get triggered. You run back into your stomach. You feel like it's a sinking stomach. You hide in your room for a while. You try to calm down. You convince yourself you didn't hear that. It was just a coincidence. You try to get back out there, but then you feel very oppressed. And there's just no shelter anywhere. And it's just nothing but, uh, you know, un- you're unsure now. You're unsure. You're triggered. You're, you're vulnerable. And then, of course, they pile on at that point. And what can you do? Well, you know, you know they'll kill you too. If, if, if I mean, there's that danger if you're in, in a situation where you could be, uh, where they could get away with it. You know what I mean? Like that's where the sabotage of vehicles comes in. Sabotage of electronics, sabotage of the house that might burn down. Um, and I said, but especially sabotage of vehicles, little nails in the tires so that, you know, you get the blowout at the inopportune moment and, you know, just no, that kind of thing. And, um, no, no, um, okay, I've got to go to break. I guess not, maybe. So, I just give all this to the Lord every day. Because, I mean, this, you know, they say, well, did that ever stop for you? Because you don't talk about it every day. Uh, No, it doesn't stop. It just, it goes on. It seems that, uh, you know, it goes on when you endeavor to do anything or, you know, you, you know, like the podcast, I mean, you know, like we have zero plays when there's 50 people in the chat room, you know, things like that where they just cut you off, you know, they, there's all kinds of oppression, but in general, if you have to, you know, um, I remember there was this one guy, he was, he became a general manager and I, I knew him because I was, my girlfriend at the time worked there, it was, it was a, like a Denny's type of thing in Topeka, Kansas. I mean, Topeka. <laughs> and at that time, I was in bands, and, you know, we'd, you know, we'd go play out in Dodge City or something, you know, and then have to drive, you know, eight hours back because, you know, they wouldn't pay enough for a hotel, motel room. So, you know, the, but we were young. You know, we could do things like that. And so I'd get in there, you know, pull in and about 10 in the morning, you know, at all-nighter, you know, setting up all the gear, playing, you know, four sets, tearing it all down, stuffing it back in the trailer. And then and then she'd be getting off about then, you know, or maybe a little earlier. And so we'd have like a breakfast, like an omelet or something. And uh, so there was a new manager that she was telling me about. And uh, he looked like, you know, he just maybe, he seemed organized and he was kind of a, little bit of a dictator, you know what I mean? He wanted people to, you know, he had he had worked there, but he now was in the position of either a general manager or a part owner or something where he had a big, you know, he had a big responsibility of running the crew, you know, running his shift or the crew or, you know, overseeing the whole thing, all the shifts. And when he got frustrated with with employees, he would, you know, go, you know, do everything himself or he'd go grab the food. Or he'd, you know, he'd, he'd, you know, bark at people and things. And But not, nothing really bad. The, the problem with him was he just wasn't really connected to the, to the basic, you know, uh, world system. He, he was just, you know, basically a lamb, kind of not, but unknowingly so. He didn't know himself. You know what I mean. He didn't. He didn't, and he wasn't one of them. So eventually, they they started. They started in the hot. The entire thing became. I watched it. It all became a hive. And at, at some point, he got broken down so much that he just was sitting on the floor whimpering. And they had to actually do a like a medical intervention to haul him off. I guess to the mental mental ward or some kind of psychiatric intervention because he he got broken down to the point of being just broken and sitting on the floor and I did see that and I, I wondered about that and I I said the guy had you know he wanted so much for the restaurant to do well he wanted so much to be a success himself 
all he wanted was just to have work there, you know, you know, be the manager and have people be able to be served, and, you know, have, for, you know, just like a Denny's, you know, they, they they seem copacetic, they they operate on their own, they don't seem to have any problems. People are generally happy with the food, and um, you know, it's a kind of an on long-standing American tradition. You know, people are fairly pleasant, you know, but in this case with him. They, you know, the employees, you know, the, the, the crew, if you will, conspired. And it didn't matter whether he was, like, he tried to be a nice, he tried to start over, he tried to be pleasant, he tried to be nice to them and say, well, today we're, you know, to, he kept trying to turn it around. And, but once it began, it, it, he couldn't turn it off, even though he should have been able to with a, Handshake and get it, you know, give it out the attaboys, having a better attitude, and you know, not letting it get under his skin, not letting it affect him. But all the incompetency affected him, so they started doing what I call gaslighting. In other words, they started being incompetent here and there on purpose because they saw it was driving him nuts. So on purpose, they would start doing this or doing that or doing this or doing that, just a little bit off. Not not so bad that you'd stop and go, you're fired, but just enough to irritate the manager and to drive him slowly insane. And, and it's all coordinated with the, the, the cook, you know, the waiter, the waitress, the bus, the bus, the busing, all of it. And it was just, it's very, you know, it was so good good that you realize it had to be coordinated from somewhere. It had to be quarterbacked from somewhere. Indeed, there are probably, there's probably a leader there, but it's being quarterbacked from the spiritual realm. Okay, and this man did not have faith. He didn't have a way to combat it because he was just a normal guy. He was not in their clubs or their covens or their, all the clubs are covens basically, or they devolve into that at some point. You know, I mean, that's that's what's, you know, the, the majority of people don't admit it. But that's, you know, people are kind of marveling how when they when the witches came against Trump, how many there were. Well, there are a lot. That's nothing. That's just drop in the bucket. They, they're, they're pretty much society is society. It's, a, it's all beholden to that uh, reality. That's what society, Babylonian society is. It's not uh, Christian. It's not uh, Judeo-Christian. It's not... Um, it's got nothing to do with any of that. It's you know, young Goodman Brown. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 uh, you know, it's the town, and he was unaware of that. Folks, if you're aware of some kind of difference like that, it doesn't mean that you're bad or you didn't do something. Sure, they're they're waiting to devour you one way or the other. They want to either get you into their club. Or kill you, you know. That's their. That's all they can either stop or go. That they have no mind, they have no intelligence. These people, they only. But in a hive, they do have a certain intelligence, especially if it's being, you know, run by people that have intel of what you're going to do in the future. You see what I'm saying? So, understand. Uh, now, what could this man have done? You know, and he he fell, and, and like I say, he he was removed eventually. They succeeded in destroying his life just through the most subtle, you know, they're like the Lilliputians, just little by little. They, they tie the man down, right? They, you know, they just, it, and, and, and when he starts saying, well, they did this, and, you know, they did that to me, and they did this to me, and they, they, and they fucked me over here, and they, they, they screwed me over there. And, and, and the people go, what are you talking about? They moved... They didn't put the napkins back in, in exactly the way you wanted it, and you flipped out that somebody didn't, uh, you know, they didn't, you know, they took five minutes instead of three minutes to bust that table over there. I mean, what are you talking about? What did, what did they do? The restaurant seems to be running fine. You're the problem, Mr. So-and-so. What do you mean? That, no, no, I know, I know that she's the ringleader, this one over here. She's orchestrating the whole thing. Well, what's she doing? I can't tell you what she's doing. I just know she's orchestrating it. What, with her eyes signaling to people? Or how do you mean? 
Well, yeah, it, it's I don't know. It seems like a mental thing. I'm not sure exactly, but they're all they're all doing it. And they're trying to destroy me. You've got to do something. Well, sir, I think you might need to talk to somebody. You know, that just, you know, I can't find any evidence of anyone doing anything to you. Well, I told them that I want this, 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 and this. And they repeatedly don't do it. I mean, I want uh, cleanliness. I want uh, uh, people to have clean uniforms. I want, you know, unified uniforms. I want, uh, you know, just to run a tight ship, you know, not, not excessively. And, uh, you know, of course, when the guy starts bleeding, you know, falling apart, of course, they double down on their gaslighting. They're moving things around a little bit, you know, not not behaving the way they were trained, just slight things, uh, since that seems to be touching a nerve. So they keep going and hit that nerve and hit that nerve and hit that nerve and hit that nerve and hit that nerve, and then they break them. And then, of course, they have a high fives all around, a lot of power to be shared, a lot of celebration, a lot of woohoos, you know. And then uh, another manager eventually comes in and it gets back to a very dull thing because that manager is just like them. So they just kind of carry on in the American tradition. Either human trafficking, gang stalking, bullying, or gaslighting. America is always numero uno. And it's overrated. The, the charity America gives out. I mean, it, basically, that just lines people's pockets. You know, right now, my, my, you know, I think the worst stalking that we have right now is these guys have gotten so uh, nuts so that they're now, you know, using directed energy weapons to, you know, burn people into oblivion. And I mean, 10,000 were missing at that Paradise Fire last year. No one batted an eye. You know what I'm saying? It's just like not even a news article, really. And uh, now they're burning down. Now they've they're they're taking on my old home stomping grounds. Right about Sunset Boulevard, four hundred five, Beverly Hills, Westwood, Brentwood, Pacific Palisades, Malibu, Topanga. You know that whole that whole corridor there from the four hundred five all the way down to the P- to PCH. They're evacuating along there. I don't know how they're doing now, but they're evacuating lots of people. So most of those people that live in that area and around UCLA, you know, most I would say of, would be of a, of a liberal persuasion. You know, it's mainly blue liberals, especially down sunset from the 405 to the beach. It's all liberal. You know, it's it's blue territory. You know, it's really all Democrats. There really aren't any. So if people say it's a Democrats against Republican thing, that's wrong because these very wealthy liberals are being, you know, targeted as well. So this this thing is, uh, uh, you know, above and beyond all that politics and all that fighting and squabbling. And, of course, when, once the military starts, you know, doing the gang stalking, doing the gaslighting, I mean, they do gaslighting. It's called a psychological operation. So they're taught how to do it, how to, you know, how to... Uh, implement things that either out people or program people or make Manchurian candidates or drive people to suicide. They, they, they do it all. They made a great study of it for the last uh, 50, 60, 70 years, and they're very, very good at it. And they do train crews to go out and, you know, move into the neighborhood. I mean, they, they seem to have unlimited money, too. Like in setups that I've seen, you know, where they move in, they become your friend, they move into your territory, you know, they've, you know, or you get a job. Always be suspect about the job. Is the job just a Truman Show thing? Because you're a commodity, you know, you, you have great value as a soul, right? If you're intact, you know, if, if, if you're with them, you've already sold your soul, you're already dead, you know, you're, you're gone. But if you still have your soul, then they're hunting for it. Like, that's why we have zombie movies and things. They represent the dead. The zombie represents the ones who sold their souls, right? And they want to eat the ones that are still intact. And that's just a basic way the horror movie is so good at explaining the unexplainable. Another great one was Invasion of the Body Snatchers, including the Nicole Kidman version, which is actually I really recommend that one because they, they it shows the hive mind. It shows conformity, you know, the, the, the rote demanded conformity 
you know, you can give up in life and you can be broken by then and you can beg them for a second chance, but they're going to make you into a compliant slave robot. I mean, that's basically your life. Plus you're dead anyway because you have no soul anymore because you've given it to them in exchange for protection because you don't want to be stalked. You don't want them to break you down because it gets very dangerous. You know, I mean, I'm at, uh, you know, the one, one, one victim that I knew was, uh, I'll just never forget Mary, who uh, had moved to San Diego, I guess had a divorce. She was living with her daughter there. And, you know, they started in on her. You know, the apparently the, the guy that uh, leased the little apartment to her, uh, she just, you know, he had keys, master keys. They started coming in and messing around with her panties and, you know, perfumes and just women stuff, you know, but just kind of, you know, leaving it out, you know, messing around, you know, be, showing evidence they've been there. And I remember we had prayed about it, and I mean, she talked to me on the phone or when this started. And it was like the same thing that, you know, that I have run into again and again since childhood. And, um, you know, so there it was full bloom. And then somehow, and this is related, you know, she just didn't feel comfortable. And she was very, very distraught and not able to sleep and didn't know when people were going to... She felt that people were coming in. We talked about maybe getting her a gun so she could be armed, you know what I mean? And and uh, and and I'm sure that that might have had an effect that might have helped, but she ended up getting a gash in her leg and um, went to the hospital and then, you know, it got, you know, apparently... Uh, you know, it got uh, a staff. She got a staff infection there, and I said, "Are the doctors treating you normally?" I mean, y- you know, I mean, it was just for a kind of a, a little, a little, not a big wound. I mean, just to get a wound dressed. Wound up being hospitalized, and then she died, just like that. And I've been in touch with her all the way through her death. Even offered, you know, to adopt her daughter if, if if she didn't have a place to go, but she went with the ex-husband, I guess, or another family member, you know. Um, you know, it was just a real traumatizing situation. I mean, just a horrible, horrible thing. And it seemed like the hospital, the guy, you know, I, I, they didn't give her the wound, but it just seemed like it was a coordinated attack. Like whatever was going on causing the owner of the place with the keys, the guy with the master keys or the superintendent or whoever he was to keep going in and out of there. And then, you know, there were, there, she would spot people in, Teshi, in town. She became, a, 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 I think, a greeter at uh, Sam's Club in San Diego. So she kind of started a new life. But then this thing jumped on her. She's a Christian woman, uh, Sam's Club, and she she tried to explain, you know, in a very small voice, you know, they're here, they're here, she would say, they're, they're all around me, they're here. She was talking about, you know, not aliens, but, but demons. And, you know, she couldn't seem to get rid of them. And as I said, she, you know, she basically got mistreated in the hospital. Oh, well, is that, that should be no surprise. No surprise. And then, uh, of course... She got eliminated. Had a young daughter, had every everything to look forward to in living. Uh, was a very nice person. Like I say, a lowly person, you know, a, a greeter at Sam's Club. By, uh, uh, taking her kid to school, you know, trying to make sure she had, uh, you know, meals and, 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 and clothing to wear. You know, just, just uh, you know, a, a Christian, not affiliated with any Satanism or anything like that or the, you know, the the world system and, you know, Babylon. She's not involved in any of that stuff. And so they started in because of that problem. You know, um, they target the ones who are not affiliated, you know. And, of course, she lived alone, you know, except for when her daughter was there. And then she, she, uh, uh, she you know, worked alone. She was just like a, a person, you know. She was... Obviously, you know, making some new friends at, at Sam's Club and other places because she's a very pl- pleasant uh, lady, you know. I mean, you know, a real nice person. Some of them meant no one any harm. I mean, you'd think, well, why'd they do that? 
And there's an answer. Well, you know, why? Why did the, uh, the, the, the why was it this, the, well, you know, she wound up in a coven of witches, obviously. And they did, you know, and they organized the, the stalking, the bullying and all that. That's a, that's how it gets organized. And then the nexus point is the demonic realm that gets conjured and then demons are sent. And she had trouble with the demons being sent. And was she opening a doorway for them? I don't really think so. I just think my my conclusion of the matter was that the Lord was going to bring her home and brought her home because she was such a pure, she was perfectly pure, a pure heart, angelic. Her name was Mary as well. You know, it doesn't get, right? And so, you know, God took her. That's my That's my prophetic analysis of that particular situation. But, you know, there it was, I went through the beginning, middle, and end of a stalking, of stalking, which again, it's, all of it was spiritual, you know, and, and people just, they can't stand that uh, everything that happens on earth is spiritual, but it is. There is no such thing as mechanical. It's all spiritual. It's all, actually, the mechanical aspect is an illusion. There is no such thing. You know, it's just we, we, we you know, all these things are created and machines and fans and air conditioners and all that stuff, uh, you know, just as, as you know, it's it's a creation it's not the creator, though. It's not. It's not where this stuff comes from. This, 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 uh, this idea of going after an innocent person that means no one any harm because they are pure, uh, go, targeting them, uh, and and then doing the gaslighting and, and the, you know the gang stalking, if you will. And uh, churches are notorious for it. You, it's very dangerous in churches because they they you know they they do have muscle and uh, you run up against. The big gang in there, the big, big, big gang, and uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's um, you know why that is. I just don't know, but I mean, it's just it's one of those limitations. What can you do about it? Well, you know, the only way you can have victory because there have been people that have been targeted throughout time. David was a person that was targeted. Now, he was also King David. He also had concubines and mistresses and, you know, he, he shot his mouth off and he tried to number people. He did a, you know, he wasn't a perfect person by any stretch. He was, a, you know, he did some ruthless things himself. But he was also being, you know, stalked because he had a position, i.e. king, that others wanted and so wanted to overthrow the king. This happens a lot when you have a leader who's tried to do something like that guy at that uh, Denny's play. It wasn't Denny's, it was some other, you know, I'm not sure what it, what, what the name of the restaurant was. It was one of those kind of restaurants. And he he was a, a leader type and, and wanted to assert himself as leader and uh, just shows what happens when they uh, coalesce like that. Well, if you've done nothing wrong and if you've been good to them, that's all the more reason to pile on and bring it. I often say that if you were just more of an asshole, you'd back them off and they would do their job. <laughs> but because you're trying to make it right, you're trying to do right by people, uh, that, that, that energizes them to do evil. It's, the, uh, it's counterintuitive. It's the opposite of what you would think. You know, you ever notice that if you're a victim or a T.I., let's say, which means you are you belong to God, you should be on your knees more, you know. You should be in concert with the living God. You should ask him how to conduct your life. You should give that over to him. And, and you know, meetings are fine. You can all have notes about what's happening, but you're never going to get to the conclusions about it without the Lord, ever. Period. There's all kinds of people on the internet saying they defeated their perps, they never had another problem, all that. Those people, because yeah, because they're on the other side, that's why. Nobody would ever say that, unless they're trying to be duplicitous. Well, when you see that sort of thing, you know, they always want to instruct everyone how to defeat your perps and all that. When you see people doing that, get the hell out of there. What's wrong with you? Use your common sense. It's not, you know, they're, they're never defeated. We live in a situation, in a soup, if you will, where it's basically spiritual warfare, good versus evil, etc. That doesn't ever stop. 
It's just that now you're aware of the actual war and the battlefield. Okay, welcome to the NFL. Now get your, you know, get your armor on. And get out on the field, get ready to fight. You know, I mean, you're not the last person that, you know, I understand how unfair it is. It's very, it's it's 100% unfair. But you're just going to have to barrel through anyway. You know, and I think this podcast will be a help to many people. Because just too many people are trying to put it into a, into a little box they can understand. You can't fathom the depths of Satan. It, it goes, it's very many configurations. It's very complex. But the main thing we need to know is they have the capability of being out front and, and anticipatory. And then we have to call on our almighty God to blind them to that, to, 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 to cut off some of their powers. God's not going to let us off scot-free. He expects us to go through it to increase our faith, to bring us closer to him, to manifest his glory upon the earth. I think that's why he allows it, to have, because against the backdrop of maximum evil, he is maximally glorified. You know, if you look at it from that perspective, that it's about him, not us necessarily, and that it's all about glorifying him, whatever you do. I don't care what job you do. You can be president of the world of the United States or whatever. You could be a, a rock star. You could be Kanye West or whatever. It's not about Kanye West. It's about the Lord glorifying himself. Well, I only say Kanye West because he's moving across the radar. Everyone seems to be arguing whether he's for real or not. I find most of these people that... You know, they they come on like a like a big flash like that. They they it's they. I'm not sure. I I, I'm just like everybody else. I I don't really care actually. I'm I'm just I got my own. You know, he's not in my world, so I I would not be going to his church because I know what would happen. So we'll just let let sleeping dogs lie. Um, he wouldn't like very much being being one of us. I don't think. Um, I don't think, I think he wants to be loved and he, he kind of sees a way to, to do it and, and have Jesus and have this whole thing going on and that's fine. But the greatest growing religion in America, uh, overtly is witchcraft, of course. Well, one prayer in Jesus name from you know, someone that belongs to Jesus, obviously, regarding stopping the witchcraft and, say, hitting Trump. Uh, ends it, that's it, and, you know, Trump can go off and kill al-Baghdadi and have a big win and drive them all nuts. They thought that all those prayers, all their uh, prayers, all their <laughs> prayers, that's a joke, all their rituals. And, and, and I told you at the beginning, they not, they're not doing binding rituals on Trump. They're doing death curses on the entire family. Death curses every day, all day long. I would not want to be friends with people doing that sort of thing. To anybody, whether it's right or left or a Democrat or Republican, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near it. Because what you sow, so shall you reap. I guarantee it. If you're throwing spells on people, you will be devastated. The locusts will come and eat all your crops Take you out, take your children. You'll be a wasteland. You'll be laid to waste by the holy living God, by your own hand, and it will be all your fault. Satanists think they have a, a special protection. They think if they find a scapegoat, someone to blame it on, that the Lord will bypass them. No, nope. he's just waiting for the right time, just like a lion. And his tail swishing in the brush, just swish, swish, watching you, his prey, witch. And when that moment is right, he's going to pounce on you and claw your face off. You feel me? Why don't you grow a few brain cells? You know, what goes around, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> People that throw spells uh, get fat. Well, that's true. Because it's it's part of that karma, you know. They try to control the karma. 
you can't control the karma. The karma is is it's beyond human uh, understanding. It's it's beyond human logic because no one knows. It just you know the old folk song is the best. You know you can run on for a long time. You can run on for a long time, but sooner or later God's going to cut you down. Oh yeah. And I've, you know, I, I've tried to warn people. I've tried to warn people not to mess with me because I have the, I do have the favor of God, you know, in my life. And it's been proven by the fact that I'm here, right? After what I do, right? I've gone right into the, into the lion's den, into the fire, into all of it. Well, mainly it's no virtue on my part. It's just because I didn't have anywhere else to go. I, I had, you know what I mean? I just was like that or die. But, um, you know, I had to rely on the Lord to get me through there, and it did boost my faith. With all these incidents, though, I just keep, you know, the Lord has me doing very interesting things. I mean, sometimes you just don't tell them you're on to them. You know, you, you see what they're doing, and you watch it, and they think you're dumb. They think you don't know, but you're, you're watching every move, like a hawk. Every move they make, you see it, because I can see every move they make, they, they don't have to be in my presence. I can see every move they make in the spirit because I've got that sight, you know. And uh, they think they're the only ones with that sight. Well, no, there's some of us that have that sight too. We see everything you do. Every move you make, every breath you take. And I don't need to, you know, because I'm a direct power source. Sometimes they've tried to, you know, just steal my power. You know, be you know that, or I should say energy. I don't have, I don't mean powers, but like an energy source. And you know, like like you know, treat you know, try to you know, get the energy from me to them, like a draining a battery, right? That's. And they look at lambs as batteries. You know, just they're there to be drained. You know, they're there to be sucked off of. And what they don't understand is, and, you know, I one time experienced this where I, I, I felt so weak, suddenly I couldn't even get up off the floor. I, I fell to the floor and I, was, I, I, was, I, I could see someone had done that to me. And within a little while, I was back running around, you know, I was back full speed. Because you can't drain something that's infinite. I am infinite power, infinite light, infinite, you know, infinite being, infinite, you know, creation, infinite um, and forever. Because my God is the almighty God. The, the power doesn't run out. I don't have to go hurt somebody to boot. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, how, what, you know, or, you know, fuck someone over or lie or cheat or steal or do any of those things the devil wants us to do in order to boost my power. I already have it without, it's given freely. It's, you know, it's the best, as, as our, our buddy Patrick says, it's the best deal you're ever going to get. You are the power source, you know. Come drink of the living water. I'm not separate from God. John 17 says that I, I and him and he and me, period. So, you know, once you will understand that much of who you are, then you start, you know, to gain confidence that you'll be able to just keep on beseeching the Lord. Prayer works. But when you're under siege by, you know, if, if you try to do anything, look, again, we'll go to the president. He's trying to do all these things, right? And he's, and he's, you know, people are afraid to even hang around him because of, of the things that are happening, you know, the people going to jail, people get in trouble. It's just, it's an ongoing, you know, onslaught of witchcraft, occultism, bad juju, secret societies, uh, you know, uh, political maneuvers, impeachment, you know, everything in the world. And the only way a guy can survive that is he's got to be in prayer or people got to be praying for him because... Uh, you know, but they're going to do this all the way to the end. They're going to gaslight. They're going to bully. They're going to lie. They're going to do false witness. They're going to arrange it so everyone is mind controlled against them. They'll do anything and everything. And they, you know, you're you're now seeing the 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 leaders doing the gangs talking. Yes, the, you have to understand it. It's everywhere, and people do it because they don't want to be the odd man out and not participate because they're afraid something will happen to them. So they go, okay, and then they, you know, 
they got to you know you know tough it up when they hurt those innocent souls, and those people commit suicide. And, you know, but it maybe that kills them to 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 see the results of their labor. But uh, you know, the, the whole point is is they don't want to join the light or the power source. You know, under Jesus Christ, they don't want to be there because they don't want to be visible and targeted. That's that's so they're over there doing the targeting. And, you know, they, they, uh, they'll they target people that are inconvenient, too. I mean, they'll target e- evil people if someone's in the way of something and they're refusing to, you know, cooperate or whatever, they will get the message, you know, they'll probably kill one, one of their friends or, you know, a loved one or someone like that as a, as a warning to, to for them to get aligned. But it's different with them. They just, they get a cue, not a full program. The full program has to go to people that that don't don't that don't first of all don't see it, so they can they can be you know hitting and jabbing, uh, you know, and be able to get the hits in without the person really understanding what they're looking at, and they start complaining, and they start saying ouch, and they start complaining that it's very easy to, to make it all their fault, because you say well what we didn't do anything, we had every intention to uh, you know to to to. To, to to do right and you know it's it's this guy is just being unreasonable and they do this with people that get positions of authority they get tested and um you know usually it's like they let people go who are on the same page as them and uh they target people who are you know just trying to do a job you know trying to do something because if if the enemy the the the, the luciferian hierarchy perceives that that work or that thing is going to glorify God or it's going to be something good for the world or something that will help people, they immediately target it for extinction. Because the world is based on, you know, the fuel of the world is degradation, not not lifting people up, not helping people. You know, give them, you know, fad diets. Give them, uh, you know, books on, uh, you know, I'm okay, you're okay. You know, give them books on how to be, uh, you know, tolerant in an intolerant world and force them to accept everything they're being spoon-fed through their TVs and, you know, you know, craft them into the Manchurian candidate citizens you want. But there's one thing I do know about these people that participate in this, that they're going to have their lives ruined. Their, their lives will be ruined. They will They will be broken into a million pieces. And on that day... All of their so-called little friends in the gang, not one of them, not even one, will talk to them on the phone or any other way. They will be persona non grata, cut from the herd, never be heard from again, and that will be the end of that. And that's what they do to each other. Yeah. Eventually they, they single one out and cut him from the herd. Oh, well, they'll do it because one gets too old. Just age alone is, is enough of a reason. They'll do it again because somebody has the wrong political affiliation or, you know, they have the, 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 the wrong, uh, you know, some, some, re- some reason. But when it starts up, too, you got to bind the demons in Jesus' name and you have to cast them out or at least bind them so they can't touch you so you can do your job. If you if you're in charge of of people and this starts happening to you, the whole mutiny thing starts happening, uh, which is not based on any behavior. It's always based on it's always based on nothing, you know, gossip, innuendo, and things like that. That's how it starts, and then they start, you know, they start in. Well, the Lord will burn them to the ground. I mean, they they will they will burn. You know, if not now, they'll burn in hell. They'll you know they're they they have no future. They have no life because they're dead. If they're in the hive, they're dead, right? They're the zombies. They're dead. If they want to live, they're going to have to be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and go that way. But you can't make someone go that way. I, the only reason I went that way is because God took me at that moment, and I've never looked back. But I mean that. Who knows if that moment will happen to anybody? I don't know when that's going to happen to people. I don't usually preach at people and, and say, hey, dig the gospel. People used to preach at me all the time. I tell them to go, you know, GFY. Because it didn't help. 
I'd pray and pray and pray and nothing worked. I needed help, especially when I was around 17, 18. I'd, I desperately needed help, but, but it, it was God's hand, I see when I look back, was on me to get me to survive. But, you know, I wasn't ready to hear the gospel. I didn't believe it anyway. It was only when God touched me and led me and taught me through the Holy Spirit that I understood a little bit about it, that I understood. But then the churches and their rejection of us and their and their stalking us and bullying us and then the death threats and the threat of blackmail that came from every single one of them. You know, the, the sabotage of vehicles, you know, the, 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 the danger of almost dying on the freeway and, you know, having it come from, uh, you know, a pastor to a mechanic to me because he wanted me eliminated because he works for the devil, understand? He works for Satan. They believe in Satan in their own clubs, in their little covens out in the woods, you know, and they do the little bonfires. Yeah, they do that too. They have their hoods and robes and things. Sure, they, they, but a lot, most of the sacrifices take place in hospitals, cars, motorcycles, skiing accidents, you know. Uh, and, and if it's set up as a ritual that will be done in plain sight, the sabotage will be done in plain sight, but then no one will question it. They'll get away with it, and then that person will just be dead, and then they're, you know, they'll be uh, yipping and yowling at their success. They won't be in mourning now. <laughs> um, in fact, the forces of gang stalking are so overwhelming upon the earth right now, pretty much like the zombie apocalypse, the only way to proceed is with the Lord. Even people that didn't understand the complexity and the, the depth of all this, they're now, they're now feeling it, you know, or anyone that wants to do it. If you want to go out and do good, you want to do something in the world, you shouldn't have to ask permission. But they're offended if you don't ask their permission. Well, they have a certain motto, and that is, you know, it's 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 never their fault. That's their motto. It's it's always the guy, the guy in charge. Or if it's in a company, it's the it's the boss of the company. He's the problem. You know, target him. You know, they're, 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 and that's what they do. And how do those people survive? Usually, it, unless they're one of them, they they have to have be with the Lord. Otherwise, they'll be crushed like that guy at that Denny's restaurant. And you know, I'm not sure what the real name was, but let's just call it Denny's. And how they 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 broke him. And no one did anything that anyone could discern. They just drove him nuts. You know, they they, they just gas lit him to death. I don't know. They they hauled him off to the. Uh, I I think we later saw him working at another restaurant, but he was not the the manager. He was just like working there. Yeah, he didn't have responsibility. If they could take a perfectly good idea, someone maybe, you know, wants to build Noah's Ark or something, they have a project they want to do. And they'll show up in the uh, in the crew somewhere that's trying to do the project, and they'll start in to see, you know, right away to see with a lot of talk behind the scenes of, you know, you know, turning everyone against that person, and they jump on him, even though he didn't he did nothing wrong. I've seen it over and over again. And you know what? It's never going to be all right to attack somebody and make up story about them to justify the attack like they're trying to do to Trump. It's never going to work. It's never going to, to work to vilify someone because you don't, you don't approve of them because they're not listening to you. See, these people, they want to be listened to. If you listen to them and bow down to them, they'll let you be the leader. That just means they're the leader and they've usurped your power. They are the usurpers. They do it with the President of the United States. They do it with the, with the boss of any company. They do it, you know, everywhere. And what happens is these bosses and these presidents and these various people in positions of authority and power, they bow down because they don't want their children hurt. 
But remember, they always have to attack you if you're good. If you're good. They're not interested in other people that are borderline criminals and stuff like that because they're just, they feel a camaraderie with those people. Kabisha. That's why you got to rely on God. It's really simple. You know, the, the only problem is if you're relying on God and they're, and they're, they're starting in, God will get you through it. You, you'll be scarred. You, you, you'll have lumps. But, oh, my God, what's going to happen to them from that day forward? You don't want to know. I don't even like to look. I just put it this way. I wouldn't want to be like them, you know, when that hammer comes down. I would want to be, you know, when the music stops, uh, not having a seat, you know. They've uh, they've decided that all they need to do is really be in their hive and, you know, and basically they're the same club, they are a club, that's talked about in Proverbs 1. You know, they lay wait for innocent blood and, you know, just slay that and take the spoil. If you like, they're a death cult. And they prosper by, you know, driving people to death. That's one thing. But they also kill, you know, and and, and uh, throw, you know, death whammies on people and hope that that kills them. And if they do, then they have a, Celebration, but they always keep it secret and out of sight and out of sight of play of out of plain sight of society. Even if the movers and shakers of society are members, which they are in many cases, not all cases. There are still wheat and tares. Their favorite thing is taking an innocent target. And destroying it and, and having the, the trauma on the innocent one's face of why are you doing all this to me? I've always thought you were good. Because that maximizes our euphoria, you idiot. Because we thrive on that. We thrive on it. We must have it. The more innocent you are, the better for stalking. The more you care about humanity and you do good works in the world, the more you must be eliminated. So we are just waiting for you to be put in charge of something. Creating something. Trying to do something. We want to make sure maximum obstacles. Every move you make, we're going to throw some wrench into it right there. And laugh when you fall. <laughs> Here's what they don't understand. When you keep getting back up, and you you don't turn poison, you don't become bitter, but you keep being a loving, open, happy individual, then they are literally driven to the insane. They are driven completely nuts. And then... When you know, and they know that you know that you know that they know that you know that they know that you know that you know that they know, but they know that you know. And then you're good to them, even though knowing what's against you. That was the only way that I survived, you know, being whacked in that situation. The only way I survived was I was good to them. I care about them. God is not fooled with people that, you know, have this God on their sleeve, you know, and they, they, they participate in these, you know, God things. And then they have this side issue of, of uh, you know, being part of something that uh, you might call it society if you want. I don't know what you'd call it, but uh, it's an ancient, ancient being. It's an ancient hierarchy. So, you 
when you go up against this stuff, you're going up against ancient demons, you know, the demonic strongholds from, from the past. You must arm up. Full armor of God, Ephesians 6. You know, Ephesians six twelve. we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities of w- wickedness in high places. You've got to have armor. What's the armor? The word of God. You know, prayer. To take extreme spiritual attacks. And then people just being, you know, just being mean. You know, they just, they just being mean because they've gotten the signal to be mean to you. They may not even know you, but they've been told in the spirit to be mean to you. So it all gets coordinated that way. Well, they're supposed to be uh, checks and balances. But when it's kind of a subtle thing, you know, moving your car in the parking lot. You look out the window, you go, that's not where my car was, to the boss, who goes, okay, well, where was it? It was over two spaces. I demand to see, to have these perpetrators put in jail. I demand to see the, uh, you know, all the evidence on this. Well, look, to me, it's like you you park there because there's no other space. Oh, well. Doesn't look to me like the car got moved. You people are doing this. You know, I walk through the, the office here, and I can hear cackling. They're cackling at me. I hear, I hear these little words like, you know, mentioning my daughter's name or my son's name or my wife. Well, if you're hearing voices, you, you need to go see a psychiatrist. Okay. They mess with my, my cubicle. I have things around or organized a certain way, and then now they have everything, everything where it wasn't before. Are you sure? Yes, they're messing with my stuff. Who did this? Oh, look, he's really unhinged. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. Nobody touched anything. Was it you? You're all in on it, aren't you? My car has moved. To that, another space. Could it be that was a couple of days ago? I mean, things, you know, things fill up. The parking lot fills up. Could, you, could it be you're mistaken? No, I'm not mistaken. I'm, why don't you go home and cool off a little bit? Come back, we can get it straightened out. Okay. Lucky him, he was able to leave, but not before he stopped by for pizza. Take some pizza home, and they were waiting for him. All right, I'm going to play. Uh, Well, you get the idea. You know, I'm I'm just trying to really give you anecdotal, you know, just just things you could relate to because uh, this is nothing new, but it is demonic. Okay, you can't defeat this because they won't believe you. That's why. I knew a guy, and he moved to Thailand, and he files police report after police report. They tell him go to a psychiatrist. <laughs> 